All right. So I'm going to piss a few people off and, and have some people that disagree with me or strongly disagree with me. Uh, you know, I could even be called some of those those typical names and whatnot. But I'm going to talk about this Jonathan Isaac situation as well as, and, and kind of turn to this Jason Whitlock piece that was put up a couple of days ago in response to Jonathan Isaac not wearing a BLM t-shirt and not kneeling, I mean, yeah, and not kneeling with the rest of his teammates and coaches for the national anthem. So this is the Pay Me No Mind Sports and Entertainment Channel. My name is Wood. Uh, let's get right into it. This big man, I don't know, he's a second-year player or something for the, the Orlando Magic. He's a younger player for them. Um, the story came out last week when, last week, over the weekend, when he did not have on a Black Lives Matter t-shirt and, um, and, and decided not to kneel with his teammates and most of the coaches. And then also... In addition to Isaac, there were also there was also Coach Pop, who did not uh, kneel for the national anthem. Becky Hammond, uh, the assistant coach um, on the the Spurs, she did not uh, kneel with with the um, with the rest of the team for the national anthem. I guess Myers Leonard is another is a white NBA player who also did kneel. Um, and it's basically, you know, the, the media and you know, some YouTube channels are running with this being a story or, you know, you got to talk about it. And I guess I'm coming and talking about it because I'm presenting it from from my angle and an angle that I really haven't heard. And I can't say that I've listened to everybody, but um, really, like there was no story. This is a personal choice. And I loved how Pop, I didn't hear him say it, but I could imagine Pop. Coach Popovich was like, man, I do what the I want to do. I'm a grown ass man. I'm seven. What is he? Seventy, mid seventies. And here's Pop, who's gone along with everything and spoken out, and and uh, challenged the uh, you know the White House, spoke his mind on everything. He he's dealt with black men for the last thirty five plus years. He's been a, a you know he's led men black men. He's he's been a mentor. He's he's won. He's been a straight shooter. Hadn't been much there until we saw the relationship come apart with um you know him and uh, Kawhi Leonard. But other than that, Pop's been been a a good man in my in my opinion. Watching from the sidelines, from the nosebleeds. But he said, hey, for this one thing right here, man, I made up my mind what I wanted to do. I didn't tell you nothing. And it's the same thing here with Jonathan Isaac. And it should have been some of us. I shouldn't even nobody should really have to speak on this for you. You should already know it. Um, but Jonathan Isaac came out and said that. Um, my life has been. Well, he, uh, he says a couple of things. My life has been supported through the gospel. Everyone is made in God's image, and we all fall short of God's glory. Each and every one of us do things every day that we shouldn't do. We say things that we shouldn't do. We shouldn't hate or dislike. Sometimes it gets to a point where we point fingers whose evil is worse. Sometimes it comes down to whose evil is most visible. I feel like I wanted to take a stand on we all make mistakes, but the gospel says there is grace for us. Uh, he comes also, he comes back and adds, uh, if we all come to an understanding of that and God wants to have a relationship with us, we can get past all the things that are messed up and jacked up. When you look around, racism isn't the only thing that plagues our society. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. That plagues our nation and plagues our world. He says it isn't, racism isn't the only thing that plagues our society, that plagues our nation and plagues our world. I feel like coming together that we want to get past not only racism, but everything that plagues our society is the gospel. He might have meant, they might have meant, in, is in the gospel right there. But that's the thing. His man, but see, we, we, don't, we don't accept and, and, um, and rock with people for, for standing in their faith. And I'm not I'm not here pushing no Bible on nobody and telling you I go to church and blah, blah. I, I, that's not what I'm doing. I'm talking about an individual. 
pulling on, uh, 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 turning to different things in this world to shape and form their opinions and point of views, their perspectives on things, and then sticking with that and standing with that. You don't just blow with the wind. But because he says what he says, there's got to be a problem with that. So then what, um, going to Jason Whitlock, he comes back and says, um, the 22 year old Orlando magic big man refuses to separate his religion, his religious faith from his actions or his interpretation of the black lives matter movement. Isaac believes the blood of Jesus Christ shed at his crucifixion absolves sin and acceptance and practice of his gospel is the most effective way for humans to combat sin, including racism. That's why Isaac stood for the national anthem Friday night before the Magic played the Nets. That's why Isaac shunned wearing a BLM t-shirt during pregame. Jonathan Isaac believes in the power of the gospel. Now, I did not, under, I, like I said last week, I did not realize that one, Jason Whitlock was a believer on this type of level. And I didn't realize that one, I guess one thing where he would, he didn't have the freedom that he wanted was to run out and talk about things along these lines uh, with his faith out in front of all of his views. And that's what he's able to do over here at out, outkick.com. Good for him. Um, and like I've said this before, like I see it every day, whether it's YouTubers, whether it's, um, whether it's podcasters, whether it's artists, whether it's people writing the dialogue in movies and I mean, in a television series, people can run out here all day with all kind of, with all kind of, uh, You can run out here with F these B's, F these hoes, F these N words, these N words, kill an N word, do some drugs, sip some lean, go have a menage a trois, uh, my girlfriend got a girlfriend. You can run out here with all this crazy stuff. I I'm sitting here watching the shy now and all of the messaging on that show about sexual orientation and whatnot. And nobody questions anything. Nobody says, hey, I'm not listening to that no more. I'm not watching that no more. I'm done. You know, there's no groundswell, I think is the word. You know, there's no widespread outrage about these types of things. But like I said, this man can sit here acting out of his faith and stick to wanting to really be about what he says he's about. And that's controversial. I, I I don't understand that. But anyway, I I mean, uh, Whitlock goes and cites a tweet from Jared Dudley, a reserve on the L.A. Lakers. Jared Dudley tweeted, every person is entitled to their own opinions. That's when the tweet should have stopped right there. <laughs> this, that's when the tweet should have stopped. Every person is entitled to their own opinions, but I disagree with him, Isaac, especially as a Christian man myself. Hmm. This movement has very little to do with religion, but more to do with equality, police brutality, and social injustice for black people. Together unified, we are at our strongest. Exclamation point. I profoundly disagree with Jared Dudley and his disagreement with, uh, with Isaac. And... If you look at it, Isaac had like three or four, five things of why he's looking at this BLM stuff second to what his, what his faith says about how he should go about moving in his world. And he says, hey, this BLM, BLM stuff at his core uh, kind of doesn't line up with my beliefs, so I ain't going. I'm not rocking with it. Maybe Jared Dudley doesn't understand his beliefs. He says, you know, as a Christian man myself, well, maybe you don't understand your, what you believe, bro. Maybe you don't understand what Isaac said because you were probably busy, too busy tweeting and, and typing when he was into his third or fourth word. Let me, 
I'm gonna take a minute. I, I, like again, man. I'm not trying to tell you I'm no big. I'm I'm not into no. I don't have any religious or faith uh, to push on nobody. But I, I have sat down and, and read some things before and processed and thought on some things before. Google a uh, stumbling block and the Bible. And read any of those passages and let me tell you, do you not see a lot of people? Uh, it's a lot of people that get out here, man, and 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 and, and they're a hundred. They're a hundred on uh you know, racism and fighting and railing against racism and talking about black excellence and encouraging black people to do this and blah, 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 and, and, lead, and trying to be leaders. And then get on the next nine subjects and they're trash. It's a bunch of, you know, it's encouraging you to do whatever. It, it's all stuff through their personal views and, and, and everything goes. But... There's some things in, in the word, in the scripture that talks about in, intentionally or recklessly putting out views that could cause your neighbor or your brother or your family member, you know, your children, it could set them back. And this is what I'm saying. It's dangerous. And it, it, that's why social media is dangerous, man, because you got a lot. You got everybody out here that wants to have their 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 platform and wants to voice their opinion. But everybody's opinion ain't, isn't me. It isn't meant to lead other people and influence other people. Even me. Even me This is why I don't talk about everything. And this is why people should be uh, should question those who want to speak on everything, because you can't be that damn well versed on a thousand, on a million subjects. And what do you, where do, you, where do you often people, where do people often speak from? From their own heart and their own mind, and that's when we run into trouble with things. So, like I said, I'm just struggling with this situation because. To me, it's a good thing to see somebody like Jonathan Isaac. I'm scratching my head watching all these players, all these black players run around with Black Lives Matter on the back of their jersey, to be honest with you. And I was I was with LeBron when he said, like, Black Lives Matter, the brand? I, I don't Even without going to their web page and looking at what they're about, what their messaging is, uh, what their mission statement is, even without digging into all of that, who who funds them, where the the money that go, uh, uh, even without looking at any of that, who in the hell goes and brands Black Lives Matter? And now, like that speaks for all black people. So now I can't even say I can't even say that. Like I gotta say, um, you know. Brothers, brother, watch out for brothers or something. I gotta say my own thing because this, 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 uh, that all encompassing hashtag basically that's this brand. I don't know, I don't know if I really agree with all of that. I'm lowercase Black Lives Matter, I'm not all caps Black Lives, that's something else. But again, man, I'm never going to, I'm not going to be the type to criticize and condemn or come for someone who is speaking out of their beliefs and they get their beliefs from something besides their own mind and their own heart. And if Jonathan Isaac can sit up here and say four and five, six very excuse me, profound, very logical reasons of why he didn't wear that shirt and didn't take a knee with those dudes. Whether or not I agree with you or not, I can at least respect you. And, and I can follow along to what you uh, follow along with what you stand for. Conversely, you got a lot of dudes out here on these, on these platforms, podcasting and YouTube. I don't know. Some dudes is just angry at everything, angry about everything. 
And I wonder sometimes what's the, what's that what's this individual's motivation? Or I quickly see the limitations in like his this argument, his or her argument is really not coming from uh, like a not anything sensical or sensible. It just isn't. Now, I don't always have to say nothing to that person. I just unsubscribe or I close, I shut the video down and keep it moving. Like, bro, he was so off. So and so was so off base. I just kept it moving, man. I'm listening to that madness. So I hate to ramble on, so I'm gonna shut this down. But um, you know, check out Jason Whitlock's piece on it. Listen to um Jonathan Isaac, and, and it's crazy because now Jonathan has blown his knee out, I believe, a couple of days later. We didn't even know this man last Wednesday. Nobody knew Jonathan Isaac last Wednesday. Maybe uh maybe uh Orlando Magic fans. But not a dude is um he's got a severe knee injury, a season ending knee injury. And, of course, the Internet will have fun with that. So, look, man, this is pay me no mind. Like I said, it, it costs you nothing. It costs you nothing to ignore me. You know, and if I said something that wasn't for you, then, then, then again, you can shut my video and unsub me. Or, you know, we can holler. We can chop it up about it. I'm confident in what I'm talking about, though. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Enjoy your day. Have a great week, too.